We're now ready to start talking about principal component analysis. Let me remind you that what our goal is here is to take some data that is in a high dimensional space, five, six, a thousand, whatever, and find a new representation that is not the canonical basis, but is some other orthonormal, and we are restricted to orthonormal, and you'll see why in a little bit, such that we can reduce the dimensionality and minimize any loss of information that happens when we move from a high dimensional space to a low dimensional space. So we're gonna do everything in 2D because it's just easier notationally and it's easier to visualize, but this extends to arbitrary dimensions and you'll see at the end how easily it extends to arbitrary dimensions. In fact, we'll be applying these to images with very high dimensionality. So let's start with a bunch of data points, X, I, Y, I, N of them in a two dimensional space. And I'm gonna keep these on a line for now because it's a nice toy example. The first thing we have to do for PCA is to zero mean the data. And the reason we have to zero mean the data is we're eventually gonna start, we're gonna very shortly be computing some variances and covariances. And in order to compute variance, we need to make sure that the data is centered on the origin. We don't really care where it's centered. We're just gonna take the full data cloud and just slide it so that it's centered on the origin. Well, how do you do that? We take every X coordinate and we subtract from it the average value of the X coordinate, it's mean. We take the Y coordinate and we subtract from it the average Y coordinate. And if I was in a three dimensional space, I'd have another line here that said Z sub I is equal to Z sub I minus one over N, the sum over I of Z sub I. Of course, this is, this is running from I equals one to N here. So compute the average X coordinate, the average Y coordinate, the average Z coordinate, the average whatever coordinate, subtract that from the X, Y, Z coordinate of every data point, and now your cloud of data will be hovering over the origin. It will be zero mean in all dimensions. Okay, little pre-processing step. Next, we are going to compute the covariance matrix. So we're gonna spend a little time talking about this because this is at the heart of principal component analysis. What is the covariance matrix? The covariance matrix for data in a two-dimensional space is a two by two matrix. In a three-dimensional space, it's a three by three matrix, and so on and so forth. And the way we compute the, the, the covariance matrix is I'm going to make a two by n matrix with my x and y coordinates in the rows that have been zero meaned. So th let's call this my data matrix. This is the transpose of my data matrix, where now the data are in the columns. I'm going to multiply this two by n by this n by two matrix, and that's gonna give me a two by two covariance matrix. Let's see why. What is in the top left uh, element of this two by two matrix? Well, it's the first row of this matrix times the first column of this matrix, which is the sum of the square of the X's. That's the variance in the X dimension. Why is it the variance? Well, what is the variance if you haven't zero mean? It's the sum of X sub I minus the mean quantity squared. Well, I've already zero mean, so the mean here is zero in this representation, so that's the variance along the X dimension of my data. Yeah. Now, what's this bottom one here? Well, that's see the second row times the second column here, so that's the sum of all the Y's. That is the variance in the Y direction. So think taking all the data, projecting it downward, that gives me the variance in this dimension. Take all the, the data, project it into the vertical axis, that's the variance in this direction. So this tells us something about how much the data varies in this dimension and in this dimension. Now the off diagonal you can see are the same, of course, because here I'm multiplying x times y, and then for the other one I'm multiplying y times x. And these tell me something of how much x and y co-vary with respect to each other. If you only have one dimensional data, there's only variance. But if you have two and higher dimensional data, you might wanna ask, how much does X vary as Y varies? So for example, here, X and Y co-vary. You can see that, they're correlated to each other. So as X gets bigger, Y gets bigger. As X gets smaller, Y gets smaller. Here, however, X and Y don't co-vary. And the way to think about this is that there is no predictive power of uh, Y for X, right? Before, when I had them along the diagonal, if I told you the value of X, I knew something about the value of Y. They co-vary in their values. Here, regardless of the value of X, 
y is zero. And so here what you will have is a covariance matrix that is zero on the off diagonal. And the covariance is said to be diagonalized because the data lives now in this one dimensional space along this axis right here. So why is the covariance at the heart of PCA? PCA is going to seek a new orthonormal basis. We continue to restrict ourselves to an orthonormal basis where the basis vectors are perpendicular to each other and unit sum that diagonalizes the covariance matrix. Why do we want to diagonalize the covariance matrix? We want to take the data from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. Why? Because if I can make the data look like this, I can throw away dimensions. In this space, the y-axis doesn't matter to me. So that's the goal of the um, PCA, is to find a new basis that diagonalizes the covariance matrix. And this little thing here, diagonalizes the covariance matrix, is just the error, essentially, that we're going to optimize for. It's one way of specifying a reduction in dimensionality. And that is at the core of PCA. Other dimensionality reduction techniques, ICA and TSNE and other things, have other objective functions. This is the objective function for PCA. And now what we have to ask ourselves is, well, how? How do we do this? Now I have an objective, right? And by the way, this, so much of what we have done throughout the semester has been the same thing. Cre tell me what you want to do. Come up with an objective function, minimize that objective function. Depending on what you're trying to do, what the objective function is, the optimization will be easy or it will be hard. It's going to turn out that this objective function, although it sounds complicated, is very easy to solve. And we're going to do that right when we come back.